hindi ko po masagot, Your Honor. Eh kasi, yung mga matataas sa inyo, ang testimony nila, hindi po sila nakakatanggap. Pero here you are, uh, the head of the accountant division, nakatanggap po kayo. Ano There was never any kayo? instance where a kaklose mo sa opisina, nagsabi rin na, uy, nakareceive din ako ng ganda uh, same. Wala anak. po, Your Honor. So it was done secretly. Would you say so? Uh, secret. Ay, discreet nga lang. Kung galing siya sa confidential uh, fund. Kasi po, uh, may nababalitaan na kasi ako na pag confidential, medyo uh, may problema. So, and yet you conform to sign. Mr. Chair, I wish to raise a few questions with Ms. Catalan. Ma'am. Ms. Catalan, you are recognized. Yes, yes, Your Honor. What made you decide to disclose the information to the committee that you received nine envelopes? Uh, I was just being honest because uh, the Honorable Chair has asked me. But what were you thinking when this question was raised, were you thinking that it will incriminate you into an offense or crime? Or were you thinking that it is just okay to disclose because you honestly believe that the same came from the personal money of the vice president? As I, as I mentioned earlier, I was made to understand that the money came personally from uh, the secretary. Ano po bang diprensya o pagkakaiba, Ms. Catalan? Kung yun po bang pera ay galing sa confidential fund at kung yung pera ay galing sa personal na pera ng vice president, may diprensya po ba yun? Yes, ma'am. Kasi nga, kaya ko siya tinanong nung una, uh, is, this, is this part of the confidential fund? And I was made to understand na no. From your personal standpoint, ma'am, Kung yun po ba ay galing sa confidential fund, what therefore is the issue? I, I could have said, uh, I could have refused to accept. Why ma'am? Bakit mo i-refuse kung galing siya sa confidential uh, fund? Kasi po, uh, may nababalitaan na kasi ako na pag confidential medyo uh, may problema. So, and yet you conform to sign I, the liquidation. Uh, in spite of the knowledge that there are issues surrounding already confidential fund. Tama po ba? Uh, I signed the liquidation voucher or liquidation report because it should be part of the liquidation documents. Yes, that I understand. Submitted. But that is a confidential fund. Liquidation of confidential fund. Tama po ba? Yes, Your Honor. So, ano po bang iniisip nyo na issue kung yung perang napabigay sa inyo ay galing sa confidential fund? that could be subjected to post-audit. That's all? Yes, Your Honor. Eh, kung ito naman pong perang ito'y galing sa personal money ni Vice President, what will be the issue? Sir, ma Your Honor, wala po kasi personal money naman po niya yun. That's what you believe? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you been in the government? I'd been in the government for 36 years. 36 years. Yes, Your Honor. If that money is part of the confidential fund, then you will be implicated for a possible case of malversation. But if that money is part of the personal money of the Vice President, please understand that the mere act of receiving money, you being in the government, already constitutes a violation of the law. And this is provided under Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act, Republic Act 3019, Paragraph 3B, Receiving of Gifts. The same is true with respect to Republic Act Number 6713, Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards, Section 7, Receiving of Gifts. And ultimately, PD 46, prohibiting the giving and receiving of gifts to public officials and employees. I hope you understand that, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you. Mr. Chair, yes. Yes, Congressman Chia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a few questions I'd like to ask. Um, maybe I can direct my questions to Attorney Pua. Apart from your service to the Vice President as a spokesperson, you were once her Chief of Staff, right? Yes, Your Honor. Attorney Pua. Mr. Chair. Sorry. Mr. Yes, Chair. You were yes, Chief Your of Honor, Staff when, he, when she was uh, the Secretary of DepEd. Uh, for a time, not, not for the entire duration, Your Honor, but for the latter time. I started April 2023, Your Honor. Up to when? Uh, what, until what time July you... 19 when she resigned. So, so a portion of the discussion of the confidential funds, when it was brought out in the open, you were then still yes, the Chief sure. of Staff of the Vice President when yes, she sure. was also uh, still the Secretary of the Bed. Yes, right? Your Honor. Mr. You Chair. heard about the testimonies of our of your fellow guests here, right? And they were mentioned about the sobre and the gifts. And I'm just wondering, uh, was there any point in time that such uh, bigayan sobre was when it was happening? What, as a as a chief of staff, I presume that part of your job is the in and outs of the office of the vice president, any memoranda, etc. Uh, well, 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 I would just like to know, Mr. Chair, uh, well, Mr. to your knowledge, do you have any, or would you know, for example, that such gifts are being given? Let presume, no, assuming without conceding that there's in fact given uh, no, out of uh, the good heart, no? Was there any point in time that you were made to also understand that this may be a regular process, that the Vice President is really giving out gifts to sobre to uh, the employees of the bed mr chair where were you when all of this are happening yeah. mr chair uh, again i'm under oath hindi ko po alam na may ganyang pupunta sa office binibigyan ng envelope uh, perhaps i need to contextualize and give you an idea of the working relationship back in deped then uh, in deped I think anyone who's worked with the Vice President would know that the way she does things, it's, it's highly compartmentalized. No? So, for example, I may be in the same office as my ASEC, who was then ASEC Fajarda, but we had totally separate duties. So what does that mean? It means that she takes care of the OSEC proper because she was already Heya even before I came in as uh, chief of staff. She was already here, yeah, no. So when I came in as chief of staff, the duties that were assigned to me was basically the day-to-day -day of DepEd. So meaning I would hold cluster meetings with the USEX on a weekly basis. My primary uh, marching order was to deliver on the Matatag agenda. And perhaps looking at it now, uh, in a very direct manner. Perhaps that's also why I was never really briefed on how confidential funds were being operationalized, on how per perhaps that's why even when I came in as chief of staff, I was not made STO or signatory or anything. The only time I can honestly say that I encountered uh, looking into the reports of confidential funds was when we were already issued an AOM. And at that time, I was also not just chief of staff, but I was OIC finance. And so it was within my purview to address and uh, respond to the AOM. I know it is very hard to Maybe fathom or imagine na bakit hindi mo alam tong mga ganito. But I think anyone in DepEd and my DepEd family is here, they would know how compartmentalized uh, we were at that time. In fact, coming into these congressional hearings, and to be very honest with you, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, kung pwede ko lang sagutin yung confidential funds, Your Honor, Gusto ko na sagutin kasi I've been defending DepEd since day one as the spokesperson in July 2022. So to be honest, if I could just defend DepEd now, defend the Vice President even, I would, I would. But uh, that's why I came here when they asked me anything. Minsan sabihin pa nga why did you admit, why did you, but that's the truth. 
and I just want to be here and tell the truth. Ngayon, pag hindi ko talaga alam, I would say hindi ko talaga alam. And okay, uh, sorry for the yes, long. Yes, I'll, 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 I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Let me ask Miss Catalan. Miss Catalan, when this sobre, when these envelopes were given to you, was it? Did you also? Was it? Uh, were you made also? Understand that this is done in secretly, or is just mag magandang ano lang? It's a regular binibigay lang na parang allowance lang, pang gift lang, or may impression ba na wag mong sabihin sa yun na muna ito or ganon? Wala po your honor. So big sabihin talagang hindi siya sinas secreto. Masas your honor yata na patawag ka lang sa office. papatawag ka sa office pero alam mo na hindi lang ikaw yung nakakatanggap I'm not aware your honor but you are aware that there are also others who may also be receiving the same uh, uh, allowances as you may call it Siguro na sa isip ko lang na I'm not the only one pero I, I didn't bother to know kung sino pa or I didn't because I was na discreet lang siya So discreet siya Opo so, Ibig sabihin there was never any instance where Eh, kaklose mo sa opisina, nagsabi rin na, uy, nakareceive din ako ng uh, the same. Wala anak. po, your honor. So it was done secretly. Would you say so? Uh, secret, ay, discreet nga lang po siguro, kasi wala akong alam, your honor. Okay, sige. Um, so, ibig sabihin, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, again, follow up your question. Mag gusto ko lang malaman, no? So you said that you've been, you ta your task really is being compartmentalized, that you have never any, you know, uh, any way of knowing that this, uh, ano, Uh, is that what you're trying to uh, make this uh, committee understand that as a chief of staff there was never any moment or any uh, like for example any instance where there was really that uh, information or knowledge kasi taking from the explanation of miss katalan uh, allowance to it's not something irregular parang ganun yung pagkaintindi niya eh. Hindi naman siya dapat sekreto or ano, although discreetly binibigay sa kanya ano pero ang understanding niya is galing pala sa personal money ni Vice President. So hindi dapat siya sekreto. So are you telling this committee that in your the span of your uh, tenure as a chief of staff you have never heard anybody or at least with your co-workers saying that there's an allowance from the good heart of the Vice President giving out for these employees. Uh, Mr. Chair If there was, please continue. If there was an instance, Your Honor, that I would say maybe pumasok sa utak ko na may nabigyan, it was probably nung 2022 December because it was meant to be parang a Christmas ano no. Yeah, but that, that's uh, already oh, ano sabi yes. ni Miss Catalan, it's that's but, regular bonuses. Uh, but we're talking about this ano. But throughout the envelopes, I can honestly say walang walang ibang usek or Miss Runa. I can honestly say I just found out today also. So walang walang ganyang usapan eh. Hindi nagkakaroon ng walang lumapit sa akin na nagtanong man lang kung ako ba may natanggap or them narating to me na sila may natanggap sila. To be perfectly honest with you, wala talaga akong narinig eh. As a chief of staff, uh, it's to me ah, uh, as a chief of staff because you're you're appointed as a chief. So big sabihin trust and confidence is everything, 'di ba? Kasi ikaw Before it reaches the your principal, everything should be, ano, it, everything should be a course through as a chief of staff through you. No, uh, it's uh, for me personally, Mr. Chair, I find it very hard to be to understand. Uh, although I'm not trying to debunk your your statement here, Attorney Pua, but to me, we all are, we all are government employees, and we know how to, the administrative processes have been going. So, uh, it's for me personally. I think it's. kind of difficult for me for you not to be able to understand and at least have a grasp on what is happening inside your office knowing that you are not only the chief of staff but you're also the spokesperson uh, for the department of education mr chair and uh, though you may not know but uh, a lot of your co-workers co in the department co-employees in the department have already, have already come out saying the same thing but uh, if we use the same argument or the statement of miss catalan na discreet pinamimigay, ilan yung lumabas na? Ibig sabihin, kung apat na ba sila, Mr. Chair, o lima? Apat yung lumabas na same 
testimony saying that they have received envelopes. Ibig sabihin, kung discreetly, kung the same manner of uh, releasing, ibig sabihin, there's no way for them to really uh, make up some stories. But they came out with the same narrative and the same stories. Yun lang yung gusto kong uh, ipaintindi, no? uh, Mr. Chair. Do you have a... What your, what's your thought on that? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I respond? I... I respect your view, sir. Like, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, Mr. Chair and uh, Honorable Congressman, if I were in your shoes, I would also find it hard to believe, hindi ba? And that's why I had to put it in context. No? I did not know the Vice President till the day I was hired as her spokesperson in July. I wasn't with her prior. Uh, so perhaps uh, there are things that, that's why I said it was compartmentalized, perhaps. There were things that uh, are not shared with everyone, are not shared with me, are shared with me, but are not shared with others either. Perhaps that's the only way I can even fathom it. No, But uh, definitely operationally, which means policy, which means whatever happens in DepEd, I can honestly say that really goes through me. But on why they are naming ASEC Sunshine as the one giving the envelope, I. I really do not know, and at that, and even if, even if, e even if you were to ask me now, I wouldn't even dare what's ask. The, no, what's the What's the What's the task of uh, Attorney Sunshine, pala, if I may ask? As far as I know, she was the head EA even before I joined DepEd, Your Honor. So, in fact, she was the one who interviewed me uh, when I applied for DepEd. And then my last interview was the vice president, and that was the day that I met the vice president for the first time when I was offered the job of spokesperson. And I remained to be a spokesperson from July 2022 to around April 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so just to give you a background on all this, uh, because I, I can... I can definitely understand, Your Honor, uh, the sentiments of the good congressman on parang medyo weird, no? Uh, Chief of Staff ka, bakit di mo alam ang lahat ng yayari? In fact, it's a bit embarrassing for me to also admit na hindi ko alam lahat ng nangyayari. But it's really the way it is. Things are compartmentalized uh, even from day one. Uh, so even as spokesperson, when may balita and I need to get to an interview, honestly, I have to message no, with the vice president at that time to find out every time on what she wants me to say during the interview. At least, just to give you a picture, Your Honor, and how it was. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, uh, I guess, uh, man, uh, manifestation in closing, Mr. Chair. Um, narinig naman natin ilan yung lumabas na po dito sa committee na the same yung kanilang sinabi, na nakareceive po sila ng envelopes. No? At hindi ko nila ma-explain kung saan lang gagaling itong mga envelopes na ito. May iba sinasabi gift, may isa sinasabi it's a form of persuasion. But whatever they call it, it's something irregular. It does not happen regularly. No? Pangalawa, yung apat na po, kung, ta kung tatanungin tina sa katanungan, sa kasagutan po ni Ms. Katala, nang sabi po niya, tinatawagan po sila individually, binibigay sa kanila. Eh, I think the same story also we've heard from the rest of our invitees who said also the same thing. No? Ibig sabihin po, uh, hindi ho sila napag, hindi na pinag-uusapan, itong apat na ito, hindi na napag-uusapan, meaning to say they've done the individual na binibigay sa kanila. So it's impossible for, for, for these individuals who came out saying the same thing to make up stories na pare-pareho po ang kanilang sinasabi. Ang point ko lang po dito, Mr. Chair, is if it's done discreetly, secretly, then there's something really uh, should... The, the, the act really in the, the giving out of these sobres must be really in question, Mr. Chair. Yun lang pong aking uh, manifestation, Mr. Chair, at marami pong salamat. Thank you, Attorney Puwa, for, the, for giving us a background. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman Akop, you recognize. I would just like to follow up the, the question of the Honorable Adyong. Uh, Yusek Puwa, ang sabi po nyo, hindi kayo nakatanggap ng envelope. Did I hear it right? Of, uh, Mr. Chair, nakatanggap po ako para hindi envelope mula kay VP mismo uh, occasionally, no? And I can try to cite the occasions if you would want yeah. me to. Yung envelope kagaya ni uh, Madam Katala. I, I was never called to ASEC Shine's office uh, for the record to receive an envelope. Uh, I don't know why, to be honest. Thank you. Uh, uh, Asak Monsayak, 
Have you received also uh, an envelope? Uh, like, good afternoon, uh, Madam Catalan. Good afternoon, I Mr. Said, Chair Monsieur. and uh, Your Honor. Nice. May I answer, Your Honor? Yes, please. Your Honor, I never received any envelope from uh, ASEC Shine Fajarda or the Vice President. Never, Your Honor. And if you will recall the testimonies of the persons who supposedly admitted that they received envelope, they started receiving uh, February and they, it uh, ended September 2023. I only joined DepEd in October 2023, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yusek Escobedo, the same question. Yusek Escobedo. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your, Your Honors, uh, hindi po ako nakatanggap, but uh, during birthday, binigyan lang po ako ng uh, isang cash lang po for my birthday and Christmas. Thank you. How about Yusek Memphin? Yusek Memphin? Uh, no, sir. No. No, sir. Now, Madam Catalan, what makes you special or what, the, what do you have that you would merit a 25,000 envelope uh, containing an envelope? Ano pong meron po kayo? Ms. Catalan, you are recognized. <clears throat> Hindi ko po masagot, Your Honor. Eh kasi, yung mga matataas sa inyo, ang testimony nila, hindi po sila nakakatanggap. Pero here you are, uh, the head of the accountant division, nakatanggap po kayo. Ano po ang meron kayo? That would merit na bigyan po kayo ng envelope ni Vice President. Uh, your Honor, Yung sinabi ng po sa akin ni uh, Sik Shine is that a, a form of gratitude. What did you do something? Uh, what did you do that would bear it? Uh, yung kuwan na yun. Na maging uh, magpapasalamat sa iyo si, si Madam Fajarda or the Vice President. Ano po yung ginawa ninyo? Uh, maybe we're just doing our job in the accounting division. So, uh, Maybe they were just uh, very. Naniniwala po ba kayo na sobre at pera ang award ng isang empleyado na efficient sa pagtrabaho po niya? Maybe your honor. Huh? When you say maybe, it is being done in the department. Ganon po ba? No, no, Your Honor, kasi o I, kaya nga, I cannot anong say meron ka na ganun ang kuwan sa iyo? I, I'm sorry, Your Honor, hindi ko po masasagot kung ano ba meron. Kasi ako, ang tingin ko dahil ikaw ang head ng accounting division, kagaya ng maging head ng budget o mga head ng treasurer, it is your position. Kasi yung yung uh, liquidation at saka clearing, dumadaan palagi sa inyo eh. Sa inyong mga opisina. Di ba? At no matter how you look at it, marami pong kalokohan sa liquidation at saka use of funds. Di po ba? Your regular transaction we ensure na lahat po ng uh, di, lahat po ng disbursement is truly supported by uh, documentary requirements but again the confidential fund is quite uh, different and the first time that we have in the department whether whether it's confidential or regular funds may mga kalokohan sa liquidation would you agree kasi ang daming kaso sa ombudsman ng ganyan eh so it's happening Uh, but in the but in depth ed, uh, the regular transaction po, we ensure na lahat po ng uh, transactions or disbursements are duly supported with supporting documents, and these are subject to post audit naman po. Hindi natin. I would ask you questions regarding the regular fund, tsaka sa procurement, but it's not the issue of the day. Ang issue kasi ngayon is the use of confidential funds. I would like to ask you that also. Pero ako, from my experience, uh, nakikita ko na yung mga ganyan na pwesto, yun po yung nare ng sobri. 
either by the heads of office or by those who transact business with your office. Kasi, the ombudsman cases would show that na nangyayari talaga. Hindi po ba kayo naniniwala ron? Naniniwala po, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Pangasaman na Bante. Ms. Catalan, you have been in the DepEd for 30 years, correct? Your Honor, 36 years. How many cabinet secretaries have you been in? I cannot remember, but the first cabinet secretary was Secretary Isumbing. Were you even given envelopes during those times on different secretaries? Your Honor, as I mentioned earlier, there was no giving of envelopes in all these years except in 2020. So therefore, only when the Vice President was the Secretary of Tempel? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You've got to realize that uh, those nine envelopes uh, uh, has a total amount of 225000 Am I right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Attorney Powa, do you remember receiving an envelope that uh, has about 200000 in it? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, no. Uh, the simple answer is no. The biggest... Yeah. If I need to share, yes, probably uh, when one time na kwento ko nga na nag-reimburse ako because I was a media party, no, for you know just, just to host the media for Christmas, I was given around 20 to 25 at that time, which was well to be candid, lower pa than what I made a bono. But who are we to ano, diba? So, but ne never, not definitely not 200, not 100,000, not 50,000. Oh, Miss Catalan, uh, he was an undersecretary of DepEd, the spokesperson of uh, the vice president, yet he has not even received, uh, uh, you know, uh, that amount of money uh, during his time. I would even guess uh, that uh, Yusek Escobedo and Yusek Mempin, who have received uh, uh, gifts no? uh, during your birthdays and Christmas, for example, you have not received that much, have you? No, Your Honor, Mr. Chief. No. Yusek Escobedo? No, Your Honor. So, hindi po ba kayo nakakahalata na Miss Catalan na napakalaki na natanggap ninyo for, you know, those nine envelopes? More than all of this uh, USEC here that have a higher position than you, than you have? No, Your Honor, because uh, I do not have any uh, information or I'm not aware that um, nakakatanggap or sino yung nakakatanggap at hindi. Yeah, but you are aware of the law. You are aware of uh, Republic Act. Uh, uh, Republic Act uh, 3019 uh, which is actually uh, 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 Republic Act 3019 Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices You're aware of that, isn't it? You know that, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, wala naman eh. So, I mean, dapat nakikita na natin ngayon yan kung o paano. That's the reason why I'm asking you na I would even guess that those envelopes, those envelopes you receive, were a form of pressure on your part to sign. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Your Honor, uh, I would like to welcome to our hearing Honorable Charisse Ann C. Hernandez, uh, representative of the Lone District of Calamba City. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, attending. Thank you. Uh, yes, Congressman Mika. 
Mr. Chair, just a quick follow-up um, for my interpolation earlier. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask Koa once again. Um, you mentioned that there was an AOM that has already been issued for the regular funds for 2023. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the AOM is issued on a quarterly ba basis when applicable. So apart from the AOM that you mentioned a while ago um, pertaining to the welfare goods, uh, under supplies and materials. Are there other AOMs that have been issued since um, 2022 pertaining to regular funds of the OVP? Mr. Yes, Tomawis, Mr. Chair. you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, apart from the two AOMs I mentioned for the uh, welfare goods uh, expenses and the uh, Pagobago campaign, uh, we have other AOMs for other deficiencies noted during our audit period. Mr. Chair, um, if I may request, uh, if I may request, Mr. Chair, for the committee to request a copy of those AOMs, I believe since we are talking about regular funds here, we no longer need to ask for um, a subpoena or issue a, a subpoena duce stecum as this pertains to regular funds, Mr. Chair. May, may I be there, guys, Mr. Chair? Ano pa? Paki uh, clarify po. ko lang po kung anong period or anong audit period po for CY 2023, 2022? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may ask, um, fiscal year 2022, fiscal year 2023. Um, from the first, uh, uh, sorry, from the third and fourth quarter of 2023, uh, 22, and the... Um, however many quarters you've already audited for fiscal year 2023. Kasi hanggang, what was the last quarter po that you audited? Year po, Mr. Chair. The last, so the last year. year po is 2023. Okay. Kasi po the AOMs that we saw on the confidential funds were on a quarterly basis. Eh. So pag regular fund po, one per year lang siya. Uh, continuous lang po siya and every time na may makita kaming deficiencies, we communicate it. Uh, we communicate the results of our audit during the year po. If that's the case, Mr. Chair, uh, may I please request for all AOMs um, issued by the Commission on Audit um, with regard to regular funds of the Office of the Vice President from fiscal year 2022, 2020, and 2023, Mr. Chair. Koa, please take note of the manifestation of uh, Congresswoman Mika Swansing. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Noted. Mer meron pa po bang uh, concern? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, follow-up lang po. Um, Mr. Chair, kanina lang po, I was thinking about the response of COA to one of the questions pertaining to the welfare goods. Um, kasi po, uh, you mentioned in the AOM that was issued for the welfare goods, the main deficiency that was found there was there was a lack of a distribution list. Um, it, it, may you please uh, confirm that, uh, Mr. Chair, on the part of COA? I broaden ko lang po na ang deficiencies is pertaining to the gaps on the existing guidelines on the distribution of welfare goods po, not on the distribution list per se. Mr. Chair, um, may you please may we please ask COA to enlighten us? What does it mean to be non-compliant with the guidelines with regards to distributions because it's um, for me it's a little bit alarming say if there are two different things if you talk about non-compliance with distribution guidelines you can either be talking about non-compliance with internal controls which you mentioned are um, receipts, um, distribution lists, etc. But on the other hand there could also be deficiencies around supplying um, names of actual beneficiaries, in which case it is no longer an internal control issue, but rather a utilization issue, an accountability issue. So I just wanted, Mr. Chair, for COA to enlighten us, kung ano po yung deficiencies nila when they say it's non-compliance with distribution policies, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I may allow po to read na lang po yung nasa report po namin. Please do so. So, in the review of welfare goods expenses amounting to 176 million for CY 2023, it revealed that due to gaps in the guidelines and procedures provided in the office order number 2023-21 dated October 13, 2023, 
the guidelines on the receipt and distribution of welfare and control measures, various deficiencies in the distribution of welfare goods, goods were noted. Then, ito, ito po yung mga deficiencies. First is the following documents needed to support the distribution of welfare goods were not required by the agency to be submitted. Then next, there are delayed preparation uh, of financial... Chair, mahaba po ba yan? Uh, you can just submit that to us. Uh, Medyo mahaba po, Mr. See, Chair. Mr. Chair, I already caught um, what I wanted to hear actually, and um, which I hope I, which I actually hope not to hear, um, which was hindi um, hindi nag-request yung agency ng documentation with regard to distribution. Tama po ba? Kasi ang ibig sabihin po nun, walang patunay na na-distribute na po yung mga welfare goods. Yun po yung pagkakaintindi ko doon po sa sinabi nyo. Um, bali po doon sa Mr. Chair, yung pong guidelines po sa existing guidelines po nila, hindi po nakalagay doon na kailangan isubmit itong mga documents na to. So where in fact, kaya po namin uh, nare-recommend na kailangan po i-include or improve po yung guidelines na include ito sa isasubmit sa amin to, suf to suffice po yung uh, distribution of welfare goods. So Mr. Chair, ibig sabihin po ba nito, yung 176 million pesos na goods, welfare goods, mga relief goods, mga wala pong documentation kung sino ang nakatanggap at kung may nakatanggap ba talaga nitong mga distribution um, uh, distributed goods na ito. Mr. Chair, hindi po lahat yung 176. That's the amount uh, recorded na, recorded expenses for welfare goods. But then, there is uh, some amounts po doon na may mga kulang or may mga deficiencies to documents. But then, the rest mostly have distribution list po. So, itong mga na-mention po namin dito sa report, uh, nakalagay po dito is some, hindi po lahat ng 176. Um, because Mr. we Chair also, uh, we also, uh, uh, to manifest na hindi po kami 100% audit. So we uh, we audit on a sampling basis. So as much as we want to audit all of this, uh, since may mayroon kaming lack of manpower, so we, or due to the time constraint din po, because for the information of everybody, we just assume the office po, uh, but last March 2024. So we have uh, from March 2024 to up to May para po i-audit yung mga transactions ni ODP. Pero Mr. Chair, ang pagkakaintindi ko po sa audit ha, you do random audits to check if there are certain areas or categories that need to be, that, that have deficiencies. And once you catch a deficiency, magde-deep dive ka dun sa area na yun eh. So halimbawa, 176 million pesos yung pinag-uusapan natin sa welfare goods. May nakita na kayong findings na may deficiencies. Nag-random sampling pa lang din kayo. Hindi nyo tinitignan na sa 176 million na to, ilan dito yung may deficiency? Medyo malaking amount po to, Mr. Chair. Kaya I'm pressing koa on this kasi paano po kung halimbawa out of the 176 million sabihin niyo na some sabihin natin less than 50% that's still um 70 million pesos which is a substantial amount kaya po nagpe-press ako na sana po wag niyo lang sabihin na merong some deficiencies na some lang yung hindi niyo alam kung may nakatanggap ba kasi medyo malaki po itong halagang pinag-uusapan natin Mr. Chair um, Kailangan nating siguraduhin na yung welfare goods na ito ay nakadating sa mga tao. May nakatanggap. Kaya pag sinabi nyo po sa amin na walang patunay na may nakatanggap, medyo nakaka-alarma po sa amin to, Mr. Chair. Ang, um, if I may clarify po, ang Please sinasabi clarify. po nung uh, audit po namin or audit result, there is a deficiencies on the existing guidelines. So may mga lapses po or weaknesses na kailangan pong i-address. So, dun sa 176... Sa po ah, may deficiency sa guidelines. At isa sa mga deficiencies ay hindi nagre-require yung agency ng documentation. In effect, as a result, may mga distribution na walang documentation. Um, Kaya po, ang bottom line dito, Mr. Chair, may mga distribution na walang patunay. Um, 
kung titingnan po natin sa report po, may mga uh, transactions or distributions na wala pong distribution list. Ilan but then yun? not the 176 million na as a whole. Naiintindihan ko po yun. Um, Paulit-ulit po tayo. Naiintindihan ko na hindi yung buong 176 million yung walang documentation. Pero ilan pong porsyento ng 176 million ang walang patunay? Kasi po sabihin natin, kahit 25% na lang yung pag-usapan natin, malaki pa din yun. Uh, for the documentation or incomplete documentation, we have part of the audit report po yung uh, nandito. First is yung na-mention po nung last time na hearing na pinresent po ni, ni Congressman Luis Tro, wherein uh, may mga laking documents po, for example, yung post-activity report, acknowledgement receipt. In, Meron po ba, sorry po, uh, uh, in the interest of time, magkano po? Pag, pag isusumatotal mo so, lahat ng mga may deficiencies. So, nasa... 60, 62, Meron po 62 million, may 218,000, 460, 434,000, and 557. But then, as to the uh, post-activity report, the... head of the agency or the management of the OBP has uh, has submitted their comment that these uh, 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 documents were uh, attached on the on the liquidation of the cash advances ng mga satellite offices. Hindi lang po nai-attach dun sa liquidation or dun sa liquidation dis distribution ng welfare goods. So, as of now po, kaya po nilagay namin or Uh, sinasabi po namin na nandun pa rin naman po yung as, as to validation, na validate din po namin yung doon sa mga nandun sa uh, other uh, attachments. Hindi lang po siya na-attach. So that's why one of the recommendations po doon sa AOM po namin is to revisit yung existing guidelines and then mas paigtingin yung mga controls para po yung mga mga kulang-kulang uh, na documents Hindi kasi sinasabing kulang talaga o no, walang documents. Eh. May mga documents naman po for the dis distribution list. There's just a weaknesses on the controls or lapses on the uh, submitted documents po sa amin. Mr. Sher, ganit po. I recognize COA's effort to address the gaps in the guidelines. Pero we also have to be cognizant of the 62 million pesos that is already in question na merong deficiencies. So, Mr. Chair, um, I would like to ask COA um, by the next hearing po to please give us a definitive answer. How many, how much of the 62 million has been clar cleared up doon po sa mga attachments? Kasi baka naman majority pa din, hindi pa din accounted for. Um, then for... For information din po, Mr. Chair, yung sa 62 million, ang lacking documents po is post-activity report, uh, which is a secondary documents lang po. But then yung mga distribution list po niya, mayroon po yun, ma'am. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, siguro po kailangan natin po ng copy ng liquidation report, lalo na po dito sa welfare goods na ito. Um, actually, supplies and expenses to be... to uh, supplies and materials expenses kasi yun po yung, I believe, roughly 40% of the whole OVP budget, if I'm not mistaken. Um, kasi po 400 million for 2025 po yung proposal nila. Um, so yun lang, Mr. Chair, we just want to make sure that there's a difference kasi between internal control deficiencies and utilization issues, liquidation issues. Kaya yun lang po, Mr. Chair, if I may request for those two documents, Um, all the AOMs issued by COA for the regular funds of the Office of the Vice President for um, fiscal year 2022 and 2023. At saka po, um, ito pong mga liquidation, ito pong mga items in question with regards to the welfare goods, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very uh, much, COA. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, Congressman. Uh, if you remember, COA, we have asked that question before, no? Yung liquidation report na yan, di ba? So, ang request na lang namin siguro, pakipast track dahil mamaya, makatanggap na naman kayo na envelope. Uh, may I be recognized, Your Honor? Yes, Ma'am Hemora, you are recognized. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, we need clarification. Do we have to wait for the uh, subpoena or request from the committee to submit those documents that were just uh, 
requested by the Honorable uh, Congresswoman Swan Singh. Mr. Chair, if I may be recognized. Um, yes, Congresswoman Swan Singh. Mr. Chair, since we're talking about regular funds here, I believe we don't, it, this, doesn't, this request doesn't necessitate the issuance of a subpoena anymore. Because from what I understand, a subpoena due to STECOM is required if we're asking for pertinent documents relating to confidential funds. But since we're talking about regular funds here, um, I, like Comsec and I had this conversation a while ago, we don't longer need the subpoena, right? I confirm your honor. I confirm your honor. Okay. But uh, we can... Uh, Request for a request, or is this uh, this forum is ne and for further approval of the chair? We'll just represent to our uh, chair that there's a request from the committee, or we will uh, wait for the re formal request from this committee. Formal request, uh, Mr. Chair. Kailangan yung bayo? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor. Yeah, this we is will, already this is already put on record. Uh, this is already put on record, so there, there should not be any more formal requests. You should have to okay. submit that to us. Okay, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, we will just uh, verbally communicate with our chair for the approval of uh, the Honorable Chair of the Commission on Audit. Uh -oh. We will just draft a letter request uh, for purposes of uh, compliance. Uh, will that suffice? Yes, Your Honor. Thank okay. you very Thank much. Thank you.